All right. Risking your lives. Is there, there's still people going, you're not really going out in public indoors, are you? The Delta, the Omega, the Charlie Brown. Uh, stay inside, this is never ending. You were real cocky a couple months ago. You we got vaccinated. <laughs> got my second shot April 19th. <laughs> I can't get sick from the corona. I'm vaccinated. See this bucket of virus? <laughs> I'll even lick metal. I'm not afraid of anything. I don't have to wear a mask. Uh, people vaccinated are getting sick. What? You need a new booster. What? A shot. Who wants to see a ball game? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wave your flipper. <laughs> That's for you. Go see the ball game. Who wants? Who wants to work again? <laughs> in the shot. It's safe, don't worry. Don't worry. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh. Go ahead, go ahead, get it, get it. I feel like I I, I mean when I take the whole steps back, I feel like this is gonna be a Broadway play in three years. You know what I mean? Like, what? It's... Six foot safe! Five foot danger. Six foot safe. Five foot danger. If you're six foot safe, I'm five foot danger. I'm coming to breathe on you. I'm the grandma killer. We 
shall determine who is essential. We shall determine who may go at your house and who shall have a muffin. And remember, if you see any children playing ones outside together, <laughs> report them and their parents. This is for your safety. Six foot safe. And then the news cockatoos come out. <laughs> watch the news, watch the news. <laughs> trust the experts, trust the experts. <laughs> trust the science, trust the science. CDC, CDC, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Fauci. Mask on, mask off, two shots, one shot, mask on, two masks. Ah! Ah! Comply, comply. Six foot safe. Do what you are told, it is for your safety. I've never seen anything like this in my life. People want to fight and argue. You don't know what's going on. Everyone knows a doctor. I know doctor. And they told me like there's a stockpile. Ah, ah, ah. That's in figures. That's in Don't ask questions. I've been flying on planes for months. Flying on a plane. This is when I knew, like, hmm, all right, this is so dangerous. Keep grandma in the basement. Wait for <laughs> wait. But you can go fly wherever you like. Now here's the best part, I don't know if you've been flying, they get you soon as you walk in the terminal. Make sure you wear your mask at all times, do your part. Stay six foot safe. Yeah, that, you know when that doesn't work? And it goes right, the minute you board that plane, everyone's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Come on, I want to get overhead space. Excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me, we got to get on the plane. We gotta, there's not enough overhead space. And then here's the best part. Now you're on a plane, I'm on a tube. I'm in a tube. An enclosed tube. Okay? And then I'm sitting next to someone right here. And right here. And this person here, I know that he's about three bills, he's got high cholesterol. He's already huffing and puffing. I'm not used to walking from one terminal to the other. I've had the gout three times in the last year, but they wouldn't take me because of COVID. Doctors don't take anyone nowadays unless you're almost dead and they put you on the respirator. You know. So I said I'm not dying, but I got the gout. And the mess is keeping him clean. His cheeks are out to here. <laughs> Oh, let's not forget the air vent above that he's too high to Trust the science. Ah! I know a doctor. I know a doctor. Facts and figures. Ah! 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 And then they then they walk up and down the aisles. It is a federal crime. A 
If we catch you with that mask below your nose, even though we're in a tube, with the air vents and a guy with high cholesterol. <laughs> you keep it on all, all times or you may never fly again and you may deal with federal punishment. But it's snack time, you can take them off. Oh, thank you! Thank you, science! Ah, ah. Thank you, experts. I get to eat with no mask on. We're so safe when we eat peanuts. Isn't this fun? Thank God I'm safe. If anything, life taught me the last two years is we don't know anything what's around the corner. You can make all the plans you want, you get a bit of CEO, your jobs are shut down. We have no clue how quick life just goes bloop, which made me crazy how many people they would put on the screen immediately are getting offended. Everyone was offended. I'm offended by this, and I'm offended by that, and I want to talk about that, and I want to talk about that. And if you're that person, listen, man, life is offensive, okay? My wife's been battling cancer for 12 years from food that she gets poisoned with that they feed us. That's offensive. We can't see the elderly because we may kill them, even though they got six days to live. We'll see you one day, Grandma. Stay behind the glass. I feel much better with no human contact. Thank you, Dr. Fauci and CDC and fear. <laughs> Thank you. I bet you she'd rather have that touch and hug and be dead tomorrow than do this the rest of her life. You don't get to pick and choose offensive. Last week, two Marines, hand to God, came to see me with their knee, no knees, blown off. Over and asked, <laughs> came in wheelchairs, followed me around. We laughed, they told their story. To me, that's offensive. But there's people literally walking around. Here's the thing with being offended. Listen, if you're easily offended, do yourself a favor. It's not healthy. It's not healthy for you. It means your asshole's tight. <laughs> it does. And if science is your God, science will tell you that's not good for your physical being. It means you're always scrunched up and your ass can't work right. And you just can't wait to go, I can't wait to talk about this subject with my facts and figures that I learned. <laughs> and we see you trying to escape, trying to let gas out. You can't even let gas out. That is so unhealthy for you. You can't hide it. You can, we can hear it. It sounds like when you blow up a balloon, <laughs> and you know when you let out a little tiny bit of air at a time? That's what your ass sounds like. I am so offended. They're going, you know, Bob, I'm losing, I'm losing work. I've been watching this new thing on the news. And uh, I, I, I never really thought about it, but I, I've, been, I've been losing my sleep and taking things out on the family. What's going on? <laughs> you ever see, you, ever, you know that toy? Yeah. Which kind? The potato head? Why is it called Mr. Potato? <laughs> 
Can you imagine just waking up in the middle of the night? I can't take this anymore! Why is it called a Mr. Potato Head? Where's my picket sign? I want the world to listen to me. <laughs> Meanwhile, this Marine's up. <laughs> okay, never mind that. I want to talk about the potato head. You know that song by Dean Martin? Baby, it's cold outside. I think it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Babies are being born, stillborn. I think Aunt Jemima should be taken up. <laughs> Come on, man, you gotta let the <laughs> out. You just need love, you just need a hug. Don't take it out in the rest of the world. Stop that, stop that. Good Lord Almighty. Kids growing up, am I a boy or am I a girl? Am I an elephant or am I an id? I'm a who, a what, a where, a when, what am I? I don't know. What does TikTok say? I don't know, what am I? Today I'm a mitt, tomorrow I'm a her. Sometimes I'm a me, sometimes, I don't know. I don't know what I am. They've shoved that down our throats. Ah, ah, ah. Gender, 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 gender. I'm a mitt, I'm a that, I'm a who, I'm a what, I'm a where. That's offensive that they're doing that to humanity. Hand to God, I know a 14-year-old child, 14-year-old boy, his mom decided to change his gender, correct, because he doesn't like his weenie. <laughs> Hand to God, true story. Am I, that's a 14-year-old child. Have you ever seen a 14-year-old boy? First of all, they're not even fully developed. Some, some, they got long torsos, <laughs> they got a big overbite with acne in the side of their head. <laughs> Playing with a ball by himself. <laughs> Always saying, my bad, my bad. <laughs> my bad. Dad, I burnt down the shed by accident. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> Can I cut my weenie off? Let the, let the children at least become adults before they can make a decision like that. And listen, if that's what you're gonna do, I'm all for you, man. Knock yourself out. You're, knock yourself out. I will, I will beg you, especially if you're a boy, just think about every angle. You may think you wanna be a female, when I was growing up, they were transvestites, and they, that's a lot of work. I have a lot of respect with a transvestite. That's a lot of work. I gotta put on shoes and pants and girdle and a lipstick and wig, and I'm selling this today. That's a lot of work. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you still do what you want. I'm begging any child that's thinking about <laughs> and injecting safe hormones. <laughs> Just think of tiny little things, like the first time you go to a concert outdoors and it's muddy out, you gotta piss in a porta potty. You might wanna speak to females before you jump into that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm so glad I'm a female now. <laughs> oh God. Sister, you don't want to come in. Ugh. You don't want to go in there. It's disgusting. There's vomit Ugh. all over the place. Ugh. There's, there's turds and blue things and there's flies. Ugh. I wish I had a penis. I could just pee anywhere. Ugh. I would die to have a penis right now. You don't want to be going, damn it, I should have been a transvestite. Damn it.
Thank God. When I grew up in the 80s, you knew what was going on here. I'll tell you what, and I'll, I'll watch your reaction. Every generation is programmed, and then they try to deprogram years later. I grew up here. Everyone knew a gender just by the earring they had and what ear it was in. <laughs> I'm a knucklehead, but I was a real knucklehead back there. I'll tell you exactly what I had on, okay? I had a dangling cross <laughs> earring. Left ear, left ear. That was the left. <laughs> yeah, I know who you are. I see you. I see the hole still in there. And that was to let gay people know, look, you can look, but you can't touch. <laughs> Left side means I'm really into chicks with my dangling earring. The cross means I'm a little religious, just saying. <laughs> yeah. And then if you were gay, you put it in your right ear to let everyone know, hey man, I'm gay, which threw me off. Like, oh my God, Larry's gay. <laughs> How did you not know? He's a good kickball player. I didn't know he could play kickball and be gay. I judged him, I didn't know. And if you had an earring in both ears, you're like, whoa, I don't know what they're into. <laughs> as a little boy, I remember watching Elton John. I had no clue, no clue. He'd be out there, Saturday, 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 up on his piano, Saturday. He had a feathered bow, Saturday. I was like, he loves Saturdays. I've never seen anyone with so much passion. <laughs> and then the 80s, he put the earring in, and his right ear went, El John's gay! <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> Didn't make me stop listening to him. Good Lord Almighty. That's it. Every generation is programmed. And then they want you to deprogram years later. It's a cycle that continues that no one catches on to because the trick is you forget about it by the time you get old. Like, I grew up in, first of all, the new generation, they have their own words, they listen to certain music. I, I don't, I, whatever. My daughters, it's just different. It's what they're being programmed. The new word is uh, dead ass. My daughter will go, Dad, I gotta get gas, dead ass. <laughs> I think I'm gonna quit my job, get a new one, dead ass. What is, what is dead ass? In my day, that was someone dropped a bomb and you walked by and like, oh my God! Your ass is dead, something's dead. Dead ass. So apparently, it means serious. Dad, we, we have to leave by 7 a.m. if we're gonna make it on time. Dead ass. <laughs> okay. I got it. But what I can't wait for is when that generation, 30 years from now, they have children,
and then they're in the house like, we need a family meeting right now. I want everyone right now down here in the living room. We're going to talk about your attitude. Uh, we're going to talk about the situation that's been going on in the rooms, in the bathroom. And I'm telling you right now, this is dead ass. <laughs> and one of you little kids are going to go, you can't say that. what it means anymore. Yeah, but in my time, your time don't count anymore. This generation would be traumatized if they grew up. We said the word retarded every 10 seconds. You know how hard it is for me not to call my kids that word sometimes? <laughs> and it was everything. It was everything. I told you to be here an hour ago. Are you retarded? What's going on? <laughs> a kid fall off the bike. He had no sympathy. He's riding down the bike and... <laughs> Teachers would call the students retarded in the classroom. I remember that day. Jim Brewer, you had six weeks to work on this. You refused to do it. You're smart, you're funny, you're creative, but you didn't do it because you're retarded. <laughs> and all the other kids are, you call them retarded. You call Brewer retarded. And that's when I'm putting you on your report card, and you can show that to your parents. <laughs> do you have a report card? Yeah, but don't say nothing. <laughs> Look at it in private, not in front of all the aunt and uncles, please. Oh, this is nice. He's retarded in everything but Jim. <laughs> I know he's referring to the 80s but I wish he'd start saying the R word. It's very <laughs> I spoil my kids. I ruined it. I gave them too much. That's my fault. It's our fault. I grew up blue collar. I grew up, <laughs> my history is so much different than my kids. I told my kids growing up, I asked God, I pray to God that they have half the childhood I did. And financially, we had nothing. I was, I was a mistake. <laughs> my mom has no problem. Yeah, yeah. No, my mom would tell me after three gin martinis, My hand to God. I didn't know what was going on growing up. All my siblings were like 20 years older. <laughs> my nieces and nephews were my age and older. So I had like older kids going, what's up, Uncle Jim? <laughs> Ma, who's that? That's your brother. That's a man.
My, my mom, my mom would have three gin martinis, right? Ling, 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 ling. And I would never see pictures of them being married. I'm like, how did you, I never see, well, here's what happened. Cling, 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 cling. You, you were a mistake, and I was gonna get rid of you. Yes, no, because in the 60s, I was in my 40s, and they said, you better not have that child, something can happen. And I thought my eggs were dried up, and I met your father, and she told me she was dried up, I don't know. <laughs> Which is, and then, and then you got, you know, they got, I got pregnant, and I thought I was pregnant. Doctor said, I'm pretty sure you're pregnant, and if I was you, I would think about getting rid of the child because something can happen. And I talked to God, I said, I don't know if I want to get rid of the kid. I feel like I should. And then three months into it, I looked in the toilet and went, oh my God, it's gone. And, uh, <laughs> And I thought I lost you, and this is my mother, my history. And my father's going, Jesus Christ, Doris, don't tell him that. Well, it's the truth, Jim. Ling, 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 ling. And then, then I was, I think it was four months later, and we were dancing, and I was on the floor, and I was, we were trying to hook up with another couple. Jesus Christ, darn it! Oh, it was the 60s. Stop it, Jim. He's old enough to understand. And I felt a kick, and then another one, and it went, oh my God, that's not gas. And a month later, you came out. And thank God you're safe and healthy, and there's nothing wrong besides you looking sleepy all the time. <laughs> you're a miracle! You're a miracle! Even the way my parents met my parents, my, my, uh, my mom's first husband was killed in World War II while she had his child, so she was traumatized. And then my father was in World War II, and um, he got married, had three kids, divorced, then met my mom, because he got divorced because he was alcoholic. What a shocker. <laughs> three years in the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, war's over. Go start a family. <laughs> hey, what's the latest Taylor Swift uh, tweet? <laughs> She's important, right? <laughs> Every 4th of July, people are like, I gotta find a quiet place. <laughs> then, no, I grew up so good. We grew, we grew up near, right here in Long Island, Valley Stream, New York. Yeah. Like six, seven miles from GFK Airport. Let me tell you something. I'm so blessed to have that upbringing because you had to learn how to get in a conversation real quick and get to the point as soon as possible. Because every three minutes between 7.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. was planes coming in for a landing right over your house. So if you were knocking on someone's door, Jeffrey, go get your bike, because we're going to go in the next neighborhood. We're going to get a... What? I don't got time to explain to...
And then that would, <laughs> that would trigger all the dogs that were still out in the neighborhood. <laughs> Big dogs on the fence. <laughs> and, then that, and then that would trigger some guy with no shirt, with his underwear. Larry, put your dogs in the house! Larry, put the damn dogs in the house! The planes are flying over! Don't look out the window, I know you. Every three minutes. We just went on the most incredible trip of a lifetime. My kids are so blessed and the jokes and giving comedy. Uh, that was God's gift, and he, I've been blessed, I'm telling you. We just went to Kenya this year, Rwanda, Cyprus, Egypt. The point is, no, I don't, I, I, you don't have to be, I'm just saying where I've been. <laughs> and where my children have been. And, and you don't, I don't realize how much I mess these kids up <laughs> until they come back from that trip. And like, Father, that was a lovely trip. <laughs> Pyramids were fascinating, and the history of Rwanda is quite educational. Um, however, perhaps in the springtime we do something more tropical like Turks and Caicos. Um, and little things like that make me realize how much moments in time just still stick out and how blessed I was to grow up the childhood I have. I didn't have the tablet. I, vacations? Vacations in Valley Stream. <laughs> was, my, was my father going, you kids can play in the sprinkler but not in the grass. You can put it in the cement in the driveway and you can play there. And I was like going to Disney World. My father's bringing out the sprinkler! Are you serious? Dennis! <laughs> and you play for hours. This time you gotta hop over it. There's always one kid delayed it because he stubbed his toe because he had no shoes on. <laughs> uh, 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 the whole chip is hanging up. <laughs> How can you not see the sidewalk cracked up? Are you retarded? How'd you not see that? <laughs> what should I do? Just. <laughs> Then, there was always one kid who made you feel a little uncomfortable because he just hovered over the sprinkler too long. <laughs> right, he was at that age where his hormones were changing and he was just discovering it while standing like... <laughs> Try this! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I tried it. No matter how much money you make, how important you think your life is, how much you can't wait for that pension to kick in and you're planning, planning. The older you get and the more you lose people, you realize life is just moments in time. And we don't know we're in it until <clears throat> it's long after and you find that peace moment. You're like, oh my God, that was such a, I didn't realize I was in a moment of time. You keep looking for it. One of those great moments was, you know, we had no money, but my mom would play hooky once in a while. And she let, she'd wake me up, Jimbo, I'm calling in sick to work. Don't tell your father. <laughs> and would you, do you have any tests today in school? No. And then she would, she would call it, I'd see her going, I can't come to work, I'm sick. And then she'd get on school, what a feeling to watch your mother. Jimbo's not coming to school today. <laughs> and this is his mother, click. <laughs> and she had it all planned out. We're gonna go have Chinese food at House of Chang in Valley Stream. And we would, and if we show up at 11 o'clock, it's the early bird. And we would show up to House of Chang. It was like going, it was better than Disney World. We went year after year at the same time and just, I mean, open the door like, I thought I was in China, I didn't know. So all these Chinese people, and they knew me every year, like, look at Jimmy, he getting so big. Oh my goodness, look at you. Open your eyes, you always look tired. <laughs> Jimmy here, open eyes, you tired. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I loved it. And I just, it was a moment in time that I still, think of in the spirit of my mother. I see her looking at me all excited that we're playing hooky. And she's like, are you enjoying everything? And I remember just like yesterday, just the dragons hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> the boot is on the wall. The big fish tank with a fish that was too big for the tank. And it could just, it couldn't swim. People look at her. And then my soul would be touched by the music. Bong, bing, dong, bong. <laughs> bing, dong, bing, dong, bong, bong, bing. Bing, bong, bong, bing, bong, 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 bing, bong. That, that hits the spirit. Everything's in slow motion. Bing, bong, bong, bong. <laughs> bing, dong, bong. such a beautiful time with just nothing so simple and life changes so quick my oldest daughter went to college it's so amazing to watch a child grow up in front of your eyes and you try to do everything you can for your children and you try to just you and your wife are there for the for the dances and and when she sang in the choir and joined the singing group and she played basketball and she graduation and always happy, always funny, always, you know, confident kid. She's like, I'm going to college, dad. 
I'm gonna go to Florida, I got a university, and life is gonna be great, I'm gonna take marine biology and children's psychology, and I dropped her off, and I saw her whole life go in front of me, and I, I sobbed like a baby. Oh my God, it's the beginning of the gym. My wife's like, oh please, I can't wait to get the other ones out of the house. <laughs> We can start to live again. Trust me, trust me, it's gonna be good. You still got your Batman outfit? Yeah. You got Wonder Woman? All right, all right. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to hear from my kid. And she came back six weeks later from college, couldn't wait. She came through the door, I'll never forget it. She walked right through and she was going, sexist, racist, racist, sexist, sexist, racist, racist, sexist, sexist, racist, gender, 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 gender. Can't say that, can't say, you can't say that. You can't, LGBTQ2, LGBTQ2, LGBTQ, sexist, racist, rights, rights. Gay rights, people rights, human rights, sexist, racist. Can't say that. You can't say that. No, it's not. That's not what it means. Yes, you can. It's racist, sexist, gender, gender. All I said was good morning. In six weeks, they had my child, and for 40 thousand dollars of my money that I go working for and paying taxes, forty thousand dollars. Six weeks to get educated at a university by professors, and in six weeks this kid came home, sorry, retarded. You got a qualm with that? You pay my tab. And this kid, nonstop, would you like some eggs? Sexist, racist, gender, 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 LGBTQ2, LGBTQ2, LGBTQ2. Everything was a fight, everything was screaming, everything was a debate, but I don't care. I had my, I had, the, a human being back, and I tell you what, I get through that. I know this is the, whatever they're doing to her. <laughs> this comes in all forms. <laughs> facts and figures, facts and figures, believe it all. <laughs> Ask no questions. Still, I had them all in the living room. And it, you know, and I ordered Chinese food because we were a family. I was thinking of my mother, the spirit. My mom, my mom's like, always just loved them. I said, you're right, mom. Oh. I ordered, I ordered. Oh. <laughs> and I ordered Chinese food for the family, okay? And I started swelling up with tears. And I didn't care about what their views are or what they say. How, how compatent they were, and how much they wanted to fight and all that. I still, I said, how much is it? She said, $75. I said, how long? She said, 20 minutes. I hung up and I felt my mother. Oh. And I was right back in House of Chang. And to myself, I went, bong, bing, bong, dong. <laughs> bing, dong, bing, bong, dong, bing, dong, 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 ding, dong. I was so happy, and then I look at my daughter, and she's having a full-blown aneurysm. <laughs> Dad, you can't, I, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my. <laughs> that is so offensive. What's offensive? I, I ordered Chinese food for the family. No, what you did when you hung up. Bong, dong, bang, bang.
that is racist. <laughs> you can't do that because you're not Chinese. <laughs> Six weeks. Education. I said, so I guess every time I order a pizza now, and I hang up, I'm not allowed to go, when the moon hits the sky like a... Racist, 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 racist. Have it be known, all Long Island is racist. You see how that nonsense works? <laughs> Good Lord Almighty. You know what? It's just different, different times, man. And I know life is short. We're all going to be dead. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think they should tell you that when you're young. Just by the way, kids, uh, we're going to learn coloring today. And just know we're going to be dead any minute. <laughs> So I want you to respect and be thankful for life a little bit more, because I know you don't think about that. And, and you do think about that once you lose someone you love, you think about it a little more, you realize you're not immortal anymore. And that, you, you know, your Botox and all that, Botox is great. Men are putting hormones in them. Well, you know, it's all fine and good until you're 80 and you drop a deuce in your pants, none of that works. <laughs> You got duck lips. Quack, 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 quack. <laughs> Grandma dropped a deuce in her pants. But she looks great. You don't want to be at that family function when little kids are going, Ugh. Someone's got a great man is, Ugh. Nan Ugh. I'll give you a dollar if you sniff her ass and you don't dry heave. Arguing, don't give dad any salad today, please. <laughs> First time, I don't know where I'm at. I got dementia and I dropped a deuce in my pants. Just put me in the woods with some antlers during hunting season <laughs> and see if I last the winter. You know what I mean? Have bets. I think he's gonna make it. He used to play baseball when he was younger, I think. Good luck, Dad. Okay. <laughs> How exciting would it be if you survive? You come out of the woods in April, one antler, no pants on. It's better than being a nursing home. Good Lord, that's a rough visit. You look great, Grandpa. Oh no, the family's coming. Put yogurt on his face. Make it look like he tried eating today. Did you try eating today? You look like you ate, Grandpa. That's 15 grand a month. $15,000. That's if it's private, if it's state run. Yeah, we got your grandfather. Uh-oh, he didn't make it. Um, Mark it down as COVID. Next. <laughs> Numbers are up. Numbers are up. <laughs> CDC, Dr. Fauci. <laughs> they don't lie. They don't lie. Who backs them financially? Don't look into it. <laughs> You know, that's another thing. When I pass away, I've been to funerals. I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't like funerals. I don't like the whole concept. First of all, it costs a lot of money when someone else passes away. 
in the family. I don't know if you've been through that, but that's like, that's tough. That's like a, I'm in the wrong business. You know, so that whole culture of a funeral, just I, I'm done with it. Who came up with this? Oh, we feel terrible for your loss. Um, if I was you, I'd get the $15,000 coffin for you, Grandma. And uh, if you've never been to a funeral, we're going to make you feel really good. We put the casket here, and then uh, who's mourning the most? You guys got to stand right next to the casket. And uh, people come in and say, sucks to be you for hours. All right, let's go. Sucks to be you. Sucks to be you. Sucks to be you. Body looks great. Who did the makeup? That's why I want my, this is how I want to go. I already wrote it out. My family can't do anything about it. When I, when I pass away and I'm left with just my corpse, and it, that's what it is at the end of the day. It's a corpse. So people fight and argue over it, but I don't want anyone to do it. Like, I got, listen, I got to hold my dad to his last breath. And the reason why I tell you that is because I know someone in here or someone watching, you're in that predicament, you're gonna be in that predicament. Don't fear it. It's the most spiritual, powerful thing you can ever do in your life to hold and watch that process. Don't fear it, trust me. It's beautiful, it's powerful. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little weird. I'll walk you through. The last breaths are a little, you know, the last breaths come in, you're like, oh God, here we go. And, oh. and then you go, ah. but then my father went, ah. <laughs> false alarm, my bad, I thought he was gone. You thought he was gone, right? I thought he was gone. And he did that three times. Oh. Like, All right, you know what? Give me the pillow. I can't take this anymore. I can't. He's going any minute anyway, my heart's been, I can't. Oh wait. <laughs> this is how I deal with my pain, okay? But when he finally did go, and I got to hold it, oh, and I waited. And then I knew, it's a primal, deep, Spirits. And when I, I want to hold every part of him that I knew I'd never, and then when it was over, I opened my eyes and I looked at him and I went, ew. <laughs> He's gone. I don't know what that is. That ain't my father. So that's why when I go, I want my life to be celebrated. Life is a celebration no matter how long I make it. Yeah. I told you before I was a mistake. I'm already a miracle if you really want to think about it. So that's why I want my corpse blasted out of a cannon. Now how much fun does that sound already? And if you want to give money to the family, you set up a VIP tent, and you get a VIP wristband, and you show up with your VIP wristband, what do I get? You get to watch the corpse get stuffed in the cannon. Take out your cameras for selfies, because Jim wanted his head sticking out of the edge of the cannon. You're a piss of brewer. You know, where the kayakers are hanging out, man. I hope they blast the corpse near us. That'd be cool. And, just, and every, everyone's invited. You're all invited. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it at Valley Stream State Park. Maybe we'll give it a just, just to see people showing up that day, not knowing, what, there's a lot of cars here. 
What's going on? They're shooting a corpse out of a cannon. <laughs> Is anyone invited? Yeah, anyone can come. <laughs> we gotta make a beer run. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then when we're ready, you're gonna wheel me out to the edge of the lake with my head sticking out. <laughs> now, for the money you would have spent on a coffin and a funeral home and a clergyman and the limo and the police escort and the flowers and the plot, use half that money, pocket the rest, and buy fireworks. Yeah. Do you know what kind of firework display you can have for $6,000? I remember I used to go to Chinatown, buy one for $48, and it'd be the size of this. Like, I don't know what this thing's gonna do. <laughs> $5,000, and just duct tape it around my body. <laughs> Put an M80 in my mouth. And then right before, I want everyone in a happy mood. I want everyone in a good mood. So we're gonna bring out little buckets with celebration of life horns. And everyone gets them and make them feel better. And it's not the horn that goes ah! I hate those horns. It's the horns, it doesn't matter your race, your gender, how old you are, how successful you are. It's the little horns with the paper curly part at the end. Everyone, oh my God, I love these. <laughs> Grandpa, you love these. I love these. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Who gave him salad? <laughs> and everyone picks their own song. My song is going to be, for those about to rock, we salute you. Yeah. By ACDC. Now, if you don't know the song, Google it. Because it's a great song to have your corpse blasted out of a cannon. So there you are. Stand up, Caltan! <laughs> For what you are about to receive. <laughs> and I'm gonna have the cannon move just to mess with the kayakers. It's facing that way! <laughs> it's facing that way! Then the firework. <laughs> and pieces of me are flying everywhere. <laughs> Put the kids behind the tree. The seagulls are eating it on them. <laughs> And then everyone blows their horn. <laughs> and then I want the smoke to say, don't be retarded. Thank you. Good night. God bless you. And may you all have love and laughter in this crazy lifetime we're living. All media is your enemy. Use your mind, your common sense. Love, spirituality, love and laughter for all. Turn it off so we can heal our minds and souls. Good night. <laughs>